today's question is, will a feather and a bowling ball fall at the same rate in a vacuum? And before you watch a few videos, we're going to do some intro notes just to introduce you to some key ideas in this mini question. So after we're done with the mini question notes, watch the two videos and then answer the question on Google Classroom and then have a nice break. I'll post some things on there if you want some items to keep you busy over spring break. I'll post a few things on there, but then I'll be back after spring break, and I hope you guys are doing well out there. Let's get into it today. Four words you'll need to know are these. Free fall, air resistance, terminal velocity, and a vacuum. So those four words are key to understanding this concept of will a bowling ball and a feather fall in a vacuum. We all know a bowling ball and a feather won't fall at the same rate if we drop them in air, but the question is what if we drop them in a vacuum? So the first word, let's look at this, free fall. <clears throat> An object is in free fall when the only force acting on it is gravity. So if there's only one force acting on it, let's say, and let's call it, let's say it's gravity. Gravity accelerates objects at 9.8 meters per second per second. That means they get faster. So every second they increase with a speed of 9.8 meters per second. That's about 32 feet per second. So every second it's increasing in speed. So gravity accelerates objects. If you drop something from uh, up in an airplane, that object will accelerate. That means it'll speed up. It won't just start at 100 miles an hour. It'll accelerate. Before we get into the other words, let's look at three thinkers who we've been talking about. Number one, you have Isaac Newton. And Isaac relates to today's lesson because, once again, he talks about gravity and tries to explain gravity mathematically. A famous quote of his is, if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. So he claims that because he came up with all these ideas, it was because he was able to stand on the shoulders of giants, such as Aristotle. This is not a real quote by Aristotle, but out of all the things that Aristotle did, he also studied gravity, or at least he studied the idea of objects falling before Newton explained gravity. And Aristotle here would believe that heavier objects fall faster than lighter ones. So based on his thoughts, remember Aristotle was all about thinking about ideas rather than testing them out. Based on Aristotle's thoughts, he believed that heavier objects would fall faster than lighter ones. And most people would probably believe that as well. If you asked your parents, do heavier objects fall faster than lighter ones, or your brother or sister, or a friend, they'd probably say, yeah, heavier objects fall faster. Well, that's only half the story. Uh, in reality, heavier objects and lighter objects fall at the same rate if we get rid of other forces that are affecting them. So let's take a look at that. Another thinker that Isaac Newton stood on the shoulders of was Galileo. Galileo died the same year that Isaac Newton was born, if you want something in your mind to kind of think about it, 1642. So they're right next to each other in history. So Galileo's briefly before Newton, and Galileo's in Italy, and Newton's in England. And Galileo gets out there and tests things. See, he's holding that micro or that uh, telescope. He gets credit for inventing one of the first reflect or uh, uh, regular telescopes. So uh, Galileo says the speed that objects fall to the ground is constant. So no matter if it's heavy or light, a heavy bowling ball or a light feather, the speed they fall to the ground is constant. And that just doesn't make sense if you drop the objects, does it? So what Galileo did, according to legend, is test all of these objects, drop these objects um, from even, they think, maybe the Leaning Tower of Pisa is one legend. And he'd test these objects by dropping them to the ground and see if they fell at the same rate, trying to chart uh, how fast they fell to the ground. And after all of his experiments, he said that objects fall at the same rate no matter what 
their mass is, no matter how heavy they are. So then the question is, why does a feather, which is so much lighter, seem to fall slower than a bowling ball, right? Well, the answer isn't the fact that gravity is pulling less on the feather. The answer comes with air resistance. Unlike the bowling ball, the feather has more air resistance compared to its mass. So the feather's mass is really small. It's very light, right? And the air can, in a way, hold up the feather. So air resistance is the fluid friction experienced by objects falling through air. So imagine this object falling through air. Remember, free fall was just the pink arrow gravity pulling it down toward the ground. Air resistance is pushing back up. Air resistance is lifting that object back up uh, as an opposite force against gravity. So a bowling ball has a great mass compared to the amount of air resistance that can hold it back up. But a feather has a pretty light mass compared to the amount of air resistance that can act back on it. For every force, there's an equal and opposite force. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So if gravity is the action, then air resistance is the reaction here on planet Earth. So that's why if you drop a bowling ball on a feather, that the bowling ball seems to fall slower, not because gravity is pulling on it less, but because air resistance is holding it up more than the bowling ball. So take a minute just to think about that. And that's, uh, that's the difference. Another term we need to know is terminal velocity. So this is the greatest velocity an object reaches when falling. This is when air resistance equals gravity. So at some point you drop that feather and it'll start accelerating, but then it'll just stay a steady speed, won't it? And it'll just kind of flutter to the ground. Take a, a piece of paper, right? A, a regular piece of paper and do the same thing. And it'll flutter to the ground roll up that or crumple up that piece of paper into a ball and drop it and it doesn't flutter it goes straight to the ground right well that balled up piece of paper has less air resistance it has the same mass as the flat piece of paper doesn't it so if the flat piece of paper falls slower and the crumpled piece of paper falls faster they have the same mass but the difference is in the air resistance a skydiver falling out of a plane or jumping out of a plane, hope they don't fall, jumping out of a plane before they pull their parachute, which their parachute works because of air resistance, but before they pull their parachute, a skydiver will get to about 120 miles an hour. That's his or her terminal velocity. That's as fast as they can get. In other words, they jump out, they start speeding up, gravity accelerates them down, then air resistance pushes them back up. The whole time, air resistance is pushing back up. But at some point, the air resistance equals the gravity, and the person doesn't accelerate any faster. They reach that top velocity of 120 miles per hour toward the ground. Okay, and one final word to think about here is vacuum. A vacuum in science is a space in which there is no matter, no particles, nothing. So I want you to think, if we take a bowling ball and a feather, or we take any object and we drop them in this area where there's no matter, will there still be gravity? I want you to think about that. And what happens when you take away the fact that there's air resistance? Will the heavy 10-pound bowling ball and the light 1-ounce one feather fall at the same rate if there's no air to affect them. So let's recap here the four words. The four words are free fall, air resistance, terminal velocity, and vacuum. I want you to think about those four words. Think about what Galileo says that it doesn't matter how heavy an object is, they'll all fall at the same rate. Think about how air resistance plays into this as a friction against an object. And then think about if we take away all of that air, do we have any air resistance in a vacuum? So recap here for the end. Will a feather and a bowling ball fall at the same rate in a vacuum? So from what you just learned, will a feather and a bowling ball fall at the same rate? And Brian Cox here, the scientist for BBC, 
is going to take a feather and a bowling ball and he's going to go to NASA's Cleveland um, facility and they're going to go in this giant room uh, and they're going to pump all the air out of it and then they're going to drop a bowling ball and a feather. And then this is from one of the moon missions where an astronaut actually takes a hammer and a feather, so not a bowling ball, but a hammer and a feather, and he drops them on moon where there's little to no atmosphere, so there's no air resistance, or you know, very small amount of air resistance if there is any kind of small atmosphere. And he drops the hammer and the moon, or the hammer and the feather on the moon, and then he mentions one of our famous thinkers after doing that. So, hope you learned something today. Watch the two videos, answer the question, and have a great spring break. I'll see you later.